Welcome to MCC Kids. My name is Miss Lindsay and I am super excited that you're joining me today at your at home experience. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever felt so stuck that things were pretty bad and there was no way you were gonna get out of it? I mean, you were stuck in a situation, okay? Now you're gonna need a lot of determination to come out of that and be unstuck, right? Well, God gives us the strength to have determination to keep going on and doing what we need to get done, right? So let me ask you this, what if you were in a situation where you knew you were gonna get hurt or even die? That is not very fun, is it? Well, there is a guy in the Bible and he knew he was about to die, but God, right? Let's start there, but God shows up. God knows that this guy needs something. He knows exactly when he needs it and he shows up and gives it to him. It allows this guy in the Bible to keep moving forward with what he needed to do, even though that might not be what other people would do. You guys, here's the thing. God is good and he knows what he's doing. He actually knows exactly what you need and when you need it. He's here with me right now and he's with you at home right now. And we get to praise him. That's what we were actually created to do, is to praise God, even when things get really hard. I want you to look in your Bible if you have some time at home, maybe you have it with you right now. In Psalm chapter 100, verses one and two, it says, shout for joy to the Lord, everyone on earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come to him with songs of joy. i 
Bible. It's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how He created us and loves us so much that He made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. And now for an amazing story. Inspired by the book of Acts, chapters 6 and 7. Stephen was the kind of guy you'd like to have as a friend, somebody you could count on. He could tell epic, true stories. So then an angel appeared to Moses in the flames of a burning bush, and he heard the Lord say, I am the God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Stephen was always ready to lend a hand. Hey, let me carry that for you or offer a word of encouragement. I know this is tough, but you've got God's spirit to help. In fact, when people needed help, everybody thought of Stephen. See, the new church was growing quickly and there were people who needed food and special care. So Peter and the apostles came up with a plan. It wouldn't be right for us to give up teaching God's word to wait on tables. Brothers and sisters, choose seven of your men. They must be known as men who are wise and full of the Holy Spirit. We will turn this important work over to them. Pick Stephen. He rescued my kitten from that tall sycamore tree. He helped my family while I was sick and couldn't work in the fields. Stephen, you're in. So Stephen and six other men were chosen to help care for the new believers. God filled Stephen with special grace and power to help him do this work. Wowzers. 
You can see that Jesus is with him. But not everyone was impressed. Rather than choosing to be joyful at the work God was doing through Stephen, there were some people that began to argue with him. No one does something for nothing. What's in all this goody-goody act for you? My friend, Jesus said the most important thing is to love God and love others. That's all I'm doing. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, Stephen had a wise answer for every question. At last, his enemies resorted to telling lies about him. I heard Stephen speak evil things against Moses and against God. This stirred up the religious leaders. They arrested Stephen and brought him before their gathering, the Sanhedrin. I haven't done anything wrong. This fella, he speaks against the law. I heard him say that Jesus of Nazareth will destroy this place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He says Jesus will change the practices that Moses gave to us. Everyone looked straight at Stephen, even the high priest Caiaphas. He doesn't seem upset. His face, it's like, like an angel's. <clears throat> Is what these people are saying true? Stephen looked up at the angry, accusing faces surrounding him. He knew these people could do anything they wanted, even kill him. But he also knew that no matter what, God was still with him. Brothers and fathers, listen to me. Stephen wanted these leaders to understand that Jesus was no small town rebel. No, Jesus was the fulfillment of a plan that God had set in motion with Abraham so long ago. The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham. Leave your country and your people, God said. Go to the land I will show you. Stephen continued the story of God's people through Jacob and Joseph and slavery in Egypt. The religious leaders listened, transfixed, as Stephen reminded them of God's work through Moses to free the Israelites and lead them to the promised land. He spoke of David and Solomon and the building of the temple. And then he took a deep breath and came to the heart of the story. You stubborn people, you won't listen. You are just like your people of long ago. Was there ever a prophet your people didn't try to hurt? And now you have handed God's promised one, Jesus, over to his enemies. You have killed him. I can't get him, get him, get him, get him. How dare you? Stephen, filled with God's spirit, stood his ground. As he looked up, God gave him a vision of heaven. I see heaven open. Jesus is standing at God's right hand. The religious leaders were so enraged, they shoved their hands over their ears and yelled so they couldn't hear another word. They rushed at Stephen. I'm telling you the truth. Rough hands grabbed Stephen and hauled him out onto the dusty stone road. A young man named Saul watched fascinated as the religious leaders brought Stephen outside the city walls under the scorching sun. Here, let me take care of your coats. Still filled with rage, the religious leaders left their coats with Saul. Then they began throwing stones at Stephen. And even through all this, Stephen's last words were filled with love. Lord, don't hold this sin against them. Jesus had told his followers to live out his love everywhere. And through God's power, Stephen continued to share God's love to his very last breath. You guys, that story about Stephen makes me wanna cry. I mean, Stephen showed God's love and shared God's love all the way up until his very last breath, literally. And the story of Stephen is so sad and it's terrible. And as a matter of fact, I bet you were expecting a different ending to that story. You were hoping that God came in and swooped down and he saved Stephen. I, I get that, I was expecting that too. But that's not exactly how it turned out, did it? We wanted God to really do something different there. And you might even be a little bit upset with God that he didn't save him. And I get that too. But here's the thing. God did show up for Stephen and he showed him a vision. And that's exactly what Stephen needed at that time. Stephen knew that when he died, he would be with God in heaven. And Stephen was able to keep going forward because he knew that God was with him. Here's the thing, guys. If God had swooped in and saved him, the whole day could have been completely different. Lives were changed that day because of what they saw. 
so here's the thing. You may have a situation going on in your life that you're not really sure how it's gonna turn out. Maybe your friends are ignoring you and you're not sure why. Or maybe your parents are fighting a lot and you don't know what's gonna happen. Or maybe someone's sick that you know and you don't know how that's gonna turn out. But here's the thing. God actually does know. He knows the end of your story. He knows the beginning of it, the middle of it, the end. He knows every single part of your life because He holds it in His hands. And you can trust that God is good and that He knows what you need and when you need it. So when you feel sad, talk to Him about it. When you feel angry, talk to Him about it. You are not by yourself. God is with you. And if you have other questions, go to an adult that you trust. But do not do it alone. You have God Almighty on your side who knows every single thing that you need and when you need it. Let's pray together. God, we just thank you so much for the story of Stephen and how you did come into the picture and you gave Stephen exactly what he needed. God, thank you for loving us enough that you know what we need and when we need what we need. God, I pray that in this time at home that our friends, they search for you. They read their Bible. They call out to you. They cry out to you in their confusion or pain. I pray that they remember you in their joy and their happiness. I pray that they know you every day and that they seek you out every single day. God, I pray that you're close, that you're at their house with them right now, and that, um, that they would run after you their whole lives, that they would always know that they can trust you. We just ask you for all these things in your name. Amen. Bye, guys. We'll see you next week. I can't wait to see you. I hope you're doing well. Bye. Stop.